This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News, and we're here in Austin, Texas with Sophie Legault, who is Director of Transport for Expo. Sophie, thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Why don't we start with, tell us a little about your role. Uh, my role, I uh, head the business unit for transport and data comm, so everything uh, that has to do with uh, Ethernet, uh, CIPRI, uh, also uh, optical RF, RF over CIPRI, for, uh, up from 1 gig to all the way to 400 gig, and we uh, develop tools for technicians in the field and for uh, monitoring the network. Okay, well, 5G is, um, is going to change the way people live their lives, and it puts a lot of pressure on carriers to not only strengthen their existing 4G networks, but lay the foundation and plan for growing their 5G networks. Can you talk a little bit about what impact that transition is going to have on their existing transport networks? Uh, yes, absolutely. So there's there's quite an impact on, on the transport network. Service providers really need to update that network to support all the new use cases that are promised for 5G. We're talking about enhanced mobile broadband, uh, also ultra uh, reliable low latency uh, application, um, massive IoT. So to be able to handle all these applications, uh, the transport network has new demands on it. Uh, so the, and what that means is that they have to have more capacity, so service providers has to have to implement more capacity. Uh, they need, uh, they have more strict requirements on latency. Uh, latency is going to be critical if we're talking about uh, a really live application, a very time restricted application. Uh, also, uh, being able to support multiple applications at the same time. So where there's a lot of talk about network slices. So how does the transport network handle that? And at the same time, uh, the 4G network will coexist with the 5G network. So that same transport network has to support both technologies for a period of time so that'll they'll be important so it's it's quite a challenge for the service provider to determine what's the best architecture for uh, that transport network. Uh, Sophie how will 5G change the transport architecture that currently supports 4G mobile backhaul and what is the impact of 5G on backhaul networks? Uh, there's there's quite an impact in terms of supporting these new services that I, I mentioned before uh, on the transport network, and it's going to impact the front hall piece of the network, the mid hall, and also the back hall. So there's a range of new technologies that are. Uh, brought in by the network equipment manufacturers to support the different applications and the different requirements that are often contradictory. If you're thinking of uh, a very low latency, but you need very high bandwidth and you need computing, uh, you know, to, to centralize computing, maybe in a data center, some of these things are contradictory. So optimizing the right architecture and making sure it supports the right services uh, is a challenge for the, the service providers. Things like latency, again, I mentioned it is going to be critical and it's going to be critical to characterize properly the network for latency. Also characterizing the different slices of the network with the right SLA parameters that make sure that they uh, support the right level of service for, uh, for example, very low latency or very high bandwidth or massive communication. So as mentioned, it's kind of contradictory and, and these things need to be uh, managed very properly and deployed uh, properly by the service provider. Quite, quite a challenge. Sophie, what are we looking at in terms of uh, key emerging front hall interfaces and what are some of the new performance criteria that will be required for those networks? Okay, so we're seeing a lot of new technology, things like uh, right now with 4G, we have a lot of CIPRI in the network, so we're seeing higher CIPRI rates getting deployed. However, CIPRI is not the optimal protocol in terms of bandwidth efficiency, so we're seeing eCIPRI being deployed at different rates again. That's really in the front all piece of the network, and we're seeing an evolution to Ethernet as well. There's a strong push to go to Ethernet for the front all which is more efficient, more known, more flexible. Uh, so that, that's a combination of, of the different technologies. If you go into the middle and, and the back all, new transport technologies like OTN, uh, Flexi are starting to be used or are projected to be used for uh, the 5G transport network. So there's different choices that are put forward by the network equipment vendors. The challenge for the service providers is, is to choose today the right architecture that'll support their services. So that's that's a challenge. There's a lot of choice out there, a lot of flexibility. The network equipment vendors are, are putting forth uh, nice technology, but it's to make the right choices today. Uh, that is a challenge. Again, they will need to support 4G as well for a number of years still, so that has to maintain uh, in the network. 
Sophie, what do you need to consider when you're testing, managing, and maintaining 5G transport networks, and what are some of the um, key best practices that you recommend? Okay. So, to start out, it's important that 5G is done right, really, from, from the beginning. And it really starts with, I haven't talked about fiber, but it, it really starts with the foundation of fiber, the fiber network, which brings the capacity into, into the network. So if you start with a strong foundation, when you uh, deploy fiber, it has to be characterized the right way, make sure it's, it's deployed uh, properly, tested properly from the get-go. That's, that's what everything is going to be built on. It's, it's the fiber network. Obviously, Expo has, has very strong expertise there. We have proven products. Uh, we've done it for 3G, 4G, LTE. So obviously, we're, we're helping our customers uh, doing that transition to 5G. Um, the next thing is, is going to be to validate the latency of the network. I've spoken a lot about latency. Uh, it's going to be a critical criteria. So validating the latency in the transport network is going to be very important. And on top of that, the different SLAs for the different network slices. So making sure they meet the right criteria all at the same time. So it's not just one slice at a time, but all the slices meeting all the SLA, that's gonna be a, a challenge as well. So really what Expo does is we bring the end-to-end -to -end tools that really allow for that deployment day one, so it's done right day one. And then after that, uh, also from a monitoring perspective, we make sure that the SLAs are met, that, that the, the network stays healthy as there's more bandwidth, as there's more changes. Um, uh, and all that has to be done thinking of uh, maximizing the operational costs because that's a critical uh, aspect as well. There's going to be more density, there's going to be more sites. So from an operational perspective, there's more to do. So there needs to be more automation, things that are done faster with, with more automation. So again, Expo brings some tools that automate the whole process of testing, validating, managing the network, which is, is, a, is a critical piece for, for our customers. Um, uh, and, 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 you know, as, as I mentioned, we've done it with our customers for uh, the past generation. So, again, we're, we're ready to do it with our customers for 5G. Sophie, uh, I know the roots of Expo are in fiber, you know, mm -hmm. going back 30 years. Uh, you've talked about uh, fiber being the core part of 5G networks and strengthening 4G networks. Yep. Um, you also talked about network slicing. Yep. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, Expo's ability to uh, measure, test, and analyze kind of going up the, the stack from layer yeah. two to layer seven. Yeah, absolutely, and, yeah, and you're right. Our core was fi is fiber, and then we've evolved uh, in terms of with our customers to be able to uh, test all the way from you know layer two to layer, or layer seven. So really, not just a physical aspect, making sure, yes, that's done right, but also all the way from the subscribe, subscriber to the core of the network, validating the application, making sure that uh, the, the, uh, the service is running properly all through the layers. So Expo has tools uh, and, and, uh, and applications that allow the customer to see and have visibility really from an end-to-end -end perspective. So again, from the subscriber all the way to the core of the network on all of the slices. So when the network is running, that is, is critical. They need, the, our customers need visibility on the network. Great. And a final question, Sophie. Uh, when, you, when you talk to your customers about Expo's um, kind of single point of differentiation from other people, what would you say uh, your differentiation point is on, on the, the transport and data? side. So on the on the transport and data comm side, it's really in terms of making sure they have all the technology that they need, that they, there's a lot of automation as well. So one key element, there's less and less uh, people in the field to validate the transport network. So it needs to be much simpler, uh, much, much faster things that give you a quick pass fail that are tools that are simple to use. So that's a key differentiator from our side. Obviously the technology in the background, uh, very solid, strong instruments from a technology perspective, but being able to add that layer of usability that super simple, one touch, pass fail, technicians love to use our units and, and, and uh, it, it really simplifies their work and accelerates their work, saving on operational uh, uh, capabilities. Capabilities, yeah. yeah. Sophie, thanks for joining us today. Thank you.